The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the January 24th. Say the 24th, I believe it is the 24th. Well, it is the 24th and it is the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. You, when you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past, well, it's just past eight o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening at the normal time at 107, we will go ahead and try to make the show as pertinent as we can. In fact, all the shows this week will be recorded between eight and nine. So please join us live if you can. And if you uh, and if you are listening to us live, we would love to hear from you. So we've got three different ways for you to do that. You can always give us a call. 877-927-6648. That's the first way. The second way is to send me an email. Now, you can send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, and please send it early versus late. Uh, we can't control the ISPs. Oftentimes, they get emails after the show out there. And then, of course, if you're in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right, I've got all the U.S. equity futures trading to the downside. The Dow's off 121 points. NASDAQ 177. S&P 32. Russell down 13. It's uh, one and a quarter percent for the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, otherwise, four tenths percent for the Dow. Seven tenths for the ES Mini. Six tenths for the Russell 2000. And age last night, a bit of a mixed bag. We had both the Shanghai and the Nikkei trade higher. Really, the Shanghai was flat out there up one point. Hang Seng off 300 points, one and a quarter point out there. And uh, you're up this morning. Just take a look at the DAX and the uh, FTSE. They're off. Well, the DAX is down 2%, 333. The FTSE is off 102. She's trading out to 73.91. Gold's up 9 bucks. Silver taking a bit of a breather, down 20 cents. If we take a light, light sweet crude, it's off 38 pennies. Natural gas back to 2 cents. 30-year treasuries up 3 ticks. She's trading out at 156.01. Over in the commodity space, you got wheat futures trading a tad higher. Soybean meal, just a tad higher. Lean hogs uh, up about uh, nearly 2% out there. U.S. dollar index, I now do have a 10-minute delay here. It's up uh, 359 ticks. She's trading out at 95.99. Now, what does all that mean with regard to where things are trading? Good question. Let's just go look at our nine panel market update chart. Give us a quick synopsis. Now we'll go take a look at, you know, maybe more detail of what's going on. But here you've got in the upper left hand corner, you've got the ES mini. And you can see that the ES mini right now is targeted or has made it to its 1.618. You don't see the charts. Charts are up. So now we've got a problem. Now we must have a technical problem. Uh, charts, charts, charts. I'm going to guess it's coming from the production room. So I got to guess you guys can hear me, uh, or Al, uh, if you can get the charts uh, posted. Yeah, I, I hear you, John. Uh, charts, charts, charts. Uh, they're they're actually being posted, so we've got something going on inside the uh, production facility. Come on, Al, get those things posted, would you? Makes it kind of hard for everybody else to see what we're looking at out here. So I'll, uh, I'm not sure what to do here. We've got four minutes and... Working through some computer problems. Okay, so we got some computer issues out there, folks. So um, some of this maybe we'll repeat and we'll come back and take a look at it. But let me just try to express to you or explain to you what it is that I see out here right now. And that is with regard to the ES Mini, uh, there's an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, an, ES, uh, an A to B equal CD to the downside. Uh, yes, it's up on YouTube, not the den. Okay, hey, thank you, Dana. 
Perfect. Thank you, Z. Um, so that, that's that's good news. So with regard to the ES mini, you can see the A to B equals CD down pattern. And uh, you're at the 1.6 weighted expansion of that level. The next area or price target range would be down at 42.68. Now, what we want to be on lookout for is some type of bullish reversal candle. I'm not suggesting that's going to happen today. I don't know whether it will or it won't out there. And we'll try to break that down where, where there might be an indication that that could uh, take place. But right now, if we did get a bullish reversal candle for the daily time frame, that would be setting up a, a bottom and at least a bounce. And it should be a fairly significant bounce because of how oversold the markets are. If we take a look at spot ball volatility and it sets the uh, chart next to it in the upper uh, uh, panel out there. Uh, you can see that's well above its 50-day exponential moving average, which is printed at 2073, and the spot fix is at 3108. The NQ has only made the uh, just below the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, so its price target, 14092, would be the 1.272 expansion. When I say expansion, folks, I'm referring to the A to B leg. The A to B leg, um, we measure it as, you know, that gives us a total move. And once the C point forms, we then have that same total move. That's what gives us the 1 to 1 level out there. But you don't want to just buy or sell a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, but I mean, you can do whatever you want. You'd really like to get a confirmation of that. And that would start certainly on the intraday charts, which we'll certainly take a look at. Uh, but right now, from a daily perspective, the NQ looks like it wants to go target the 14092 level. The US dollar index, uh, this formed a nice uh, Gartley buy pattern. It did it way back here. So when I say way back here, it's on the trading session of January 14th. Now price above the top of its daily profile. I believe it's right now above the top of its monthly profile. Well, 96 bucks. So the U.S. dollar index looks like it wants to move higher. You've got gold moving higher out there. Maybe that confuses some folks. But if we go take a look at uh, Goldilocks, in fact, I think I could do this relatively quickly. And we can come back to this nine panel chart out here. I don't know what the answer is, but I just want to take a look at how is gold trading in all of the major currencies. So if we take a look at gold, it's up in terms of dollars. It's up in terms of euros. It's up in terms of yen. It's up in terms of pounds. In fact, it's up quite a, a bit in terms of pounds out here. So you got a rally that's going on. Um, the only one that's taken out the highs of Friday really trading above the highs of Friday have been in euros and in pines out there. But this actually looks a uh, positive for uh, Goldilocks. Now back to that nine panel chart out there. So don't think of, uh, I know a lot of people will work on just, uh, they get focused on the correlation between gold and US dollar index. It is dangerous to do that. You want to understand how gold is trading on uh, traders' desks around the globe. If you're in Europe, yes, you're trading it in terms of dollars, but you're really taking a look at what is it doing in terms of your own local currency out there. Okay, enough of that. If we take a look at silver, silver has an A to B equals CD to the upside. It made the 1.272 expansion level on Friday. I'm, on Thursday, price was an inside day on Friday. That typically means that the trend will continue, although this morning we're seeing a pullback. Now, there is a new profile that is formed inside of silver. There's not one in the ES. There's not one in the NQ. There's not one in the dollar. There's not one in the Russell 2000. At least there wasn't as of about 25 minutes ago. But there is one that is trying to form, and I say trying to form, inside silver because we won't have confirmation of this until today. But here's what we know about the new profile that is attempting to form. It is below price. That is a bullish signal. doesn't mean that price can't pull back to test the top of that profile which would be supported, the first level of support. That's at 2351 out there. Lightsweet crew just consolidating with inside its daily profile. Resistance out here at 8710. Support 8320. Natural gas continues to find support at the bottom of its daily profile, 366. And the 30-year treasury should find resistance at about 156 and 2836. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money 
money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so we tried to fix a problem during the break out there, and I might have screwed something up on my system. So we're going to find out here momentarily. But right now, what you should be, at least be able to see are the 30-minute time frame charts for the equity future contracts out there. Now, you'll see those in Tiger TV. So we don't have anything fixed here for the Tiger's Den. So if you are listening in, you're inside the Tiger's Den, switch over to Tiger TV if you would. You'll be able to see the charts. And the charts that are up right now are the four 30-minute equity future contracts out here. So let's review what they're signaling to us. Now we can go down and take a look at the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the eight panel charts, let's say, for each of these equity future contracts. And I'll take care of uh, a question that came in from Peter in Park City out there. He wanted us to do that, so we'll do that. But here's what we know. So on Friday, as the market closed, many of you that are listeners to the show would have noticed that the spot volatility closed up by more than 10%. Whenever there's a one-day rate of change above 10%, we typically see a bounce or a bottom on the very next trading session. Well, it turned out that as the market was coming to a close, and I'm referring back to these blue arrows, and the blue arrows um, are showing that we had nice TD9 count bottoms that had formed as we came that close. So when the futures opened last evening at 6 o'clock, not a surprise to anybody out there that we saw a uh, bounce. Now, the question is, why did price stop at about the uh, midnight uh, time frame? Uh, well, in this case here, maybe about 9.30. I, I, the, the real decline, it, the real market stopped uh, moving sideways and higher at about midnight, 12.30 or something like that. And so there are some profile levels inside the ES Mini that were acting as resistance. But nonetheless, uh, we did get that little bounce. And then from there, from that move, you know, midnight-ish time frame, we saw a move lower. And that move lower generated TD9 counts for the ES. This is at 6 o'clock this morning. And uh, that right now is uh, is under attack. It formed a uh, TD9 count for and a Rhodes momentum indicator signal for the Dow, as well as for the uh, TD9 count inside the Russell 2000. So each of those bottoms, those TD9 counts, are being attacked as we speak right now. We've got just a little less than 10 minutes left in the trading session. If they close below those lows, they suggest lower price. So what we'll do here is we'll change from this set of charts. And just uh, if you would give me a moment here to get that set up. 
I'm going to try to get this set up. And we'll go take, like, we'll start with looking at the ES Mini. So go from the ES Mini then down. And what we're looking for here is we're just simply trying to understand what the messages are, where price uh, can find support or resistance, where it may be able to find that. And so now let's get rid of the blue, the, uh, the, the running woman, although that is a nice area to run, that's for sure. And let's get over to our eight panel chart. So we begin by taking a look at the ES Mini in the upper left hand side. You can see on a monthly basis, this generated a TD nine count top, price is below the oscillator and change line. The month doesn't end till next Monday. It closed below 45.27, which suggests you could see, not will, but you could see move all the way back to 37.20. That is the breakout level. In the ES Mini out here, we have a confirmed Rosemontum indicator top for the weekly time frame, and it could be targeting 41.26.75. I'm not saying it's targeting it right now. I'm saying over time, that becomes its price target. If we look at the daily time frame chart, well, we've covered the A to B equals CD patterns. You can see that the oscillator and change line out here did change colors. And what we know is that typically when we do see a bottom, price will go ahead and bounce up to that level. That level right now is at 45.64. We don't have any kind of a bottom signal. So instead, we're only in bar number five. And so from a daily perspective, it's supporting what we're looking at the weekly and the monthly time frame. And that price may continue to add lower. To the 30-minute chart, you can see the T nine count bottom at six o'clock this morning you can see that price is below that level when it gets below that level on a 30 minute basis we go to the next time frame the next time frame is 60 minutes that's your lower left hand panel well turns out on the 60 minute time frame chart this is bar number nine so as we come into the nine o'clock time frame or what the 60 minute chart is saying is that we should see a short-term bottom some type of bottom between nine and ten Okay, I'm going to go with 930 out there. And what we might see is price go ahead and bounce and go target the oscillator and change line. Currently at 4374. Now, look, I know if you're listening at 122 right now in the afternoon, this maybe isn't helping you. But what you're trying to do here, what I am trying to help you with, is just kind of going through S&P. If you turn to Tiger TV, you'll see the charts. Our apologies. We're having a technical issue with one of our computers that controls that. So you will be able to follow along with the charts on Tiger TV. No problem at all. On the 120 minute time frame chart you do have well you don't have any kind of a bottom signal as we speak right now uh, the uh, four hour time frame chart no bottom signal there either and you are in a TD9 count bottom signal for the five hour chart so you've got two potential TD9 counts the 60 minute and the five hour chart the five hour chart this session is going to close at what time at, at nine o'clock okay so uh, now we do know that bottoms can form on bars nine or the bar following nine, eight, eight nine Eight bars, eight, nine, or the bar following nine. It has to be those, either of those bars have to be the low of that entire pattern out there. In this case, here we're looking at TD9 count bottom. So, how are we going to summarize this? Well, what I would do if you're an intraday trader, I'd be focused on the 60 minute chart and the five hour chart looking for signals. When we take a look at the five hour chart, we haven't seen price close above an oscillator and change line for quite some time. So, therefore, and this is going to be approximate, certainly at 123, if price is trading above 44, what's called 44, 20. 44.15 to 44.20, that's going to give us a little bit of a change in trend signal for the five-hour time frame chart. And what that would then suggest is a move up to 45.11. Short of any of that happening, if I just simply expand out the daily time frame chart, let me see what else we have out here to, what the heck happened there? Yeah, darn. So this is a problem. As I said, I tried doing something to help us uh, fix that situation, and that doesn't seem to have worked. Wow, how do I do that? I think what I'll do is during the break, I'll just simply reconnect into the uh, into the uh, production facility, see if we can resolve that. So I can't do that. What I can do, though, I hope, is just switch over and take a look at the NQ charts out here. So the NQ, we're going to go do this eight-panel chart series as well. Uh, that's natural gas. Uh, we, could, we could take a look at natural gas, but I said, we'll go take a look at the NQ. I'd like to do what I say we're going to do. Now, in the case of the NQ, on a monthly basis, it appears we will get a confirmed Rogemintum indicator top out there. That suggests the NQ would target 12207 over time. The weekly time frame chart has a Rogemintum indicator top as well. There's a nice little shooting star that I see. So its price target is 13462. So here's what the NQ is telling us, 13462 to 12207. That's uh, 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 where the price targets will be unless we see some type of bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, I'm not going to expand this chart out that way. Let me see if I can find anything here I really can't not that I can see right now in this little small 
area that I've got to work with. On the 30-minute time frame chart, no bottom signal at all as we speak. So the NQ is saying, hey, I want lower price. The 60-minute chart out here, no bottom signal at all. The 120-minute, there's no bottom signal. On a um, four-hour time frame chart, price is taking out wave number seven. That's letter G as we speak, so there's no bottom signal there. And on the, it's all up to the five-hour time frame chart. Uh, I'll expand it because we won't come back to this. So on the five-hour time frame chart, oh, it didn't work again here either. <clears throat> but what you can see, at least as you can see, we are in bar number nine. So the five-hour time frame charts for the ES Mini and the NQ may be what it is that we need to uh, keep an eye on. Let me switch over here while we've got just about 15 seconds. Real quickly, we'll take a look at the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract. And uh, pull that up on our screen. Again, we're looking for any kind of support, bottom signals with regard to the monthly time frame. Uh, this is suggesting you could see a move to 25,293 over time. Looks like 33,623 is a, a given here, or 33,695. That's a TD9 count breakout level. We would expect or anticipate that that's where the Dow would bottom out here. You're in bar number seven on a TD9 count for the daily time frame. That says a bottom could form between tomorrow and Thursday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, now, folks. If you are listening at one thirty, thanks so much for doing that. We are recording today's show and the rest of this week between 8 and 9 this morning. I've got family that's in town, of course, uh, and uh, some of them, from everybody's from Michigan. And I think they were expecting something other than 40-degree uh, weather down here in Delray Beach. I know I was expecting something more than 
45 degrees when I woke up this morning. Now, of course, if you're in the north, you're like, I know your heart is just just bleeding for Stevie here because it's 47 degrees. It's cold down here in uh, Florida. Right now, we've got the uh, uh, futures, all the U.S. equity futures trading lower. Dow's off 208. S&P is down uh, 44. NASDAQ 100, 209. And the Russell's down by 20 points. Uh, in that uh, first uh, segment there, second segment, we didn't see any bottom signals. We did take a look and found um, you know the five-hour time frame charts uh, have got the most for a potential bottoming signal out there. I believe it was a 60-minute. Might have been on the ES and the NQ. Now, we should expect and anticipate some type of a uh, bottom out here. The better one would be one that forms perhaps uh, between tomorrow and Wednesday out there. At least that was the Dow Equity Future contract that we looked at that was in bar number seven, I believe, today. Now, the reason why I, I said what I just said is because we, we should expect and anticipate a bounce. And it should be more than a bounce out here. It should be a significant bounce. And the reason I'm saying that is because if we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator, that is panel number two. That is the difference uh, between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Whew, that's a uh, that's a sentence there, but that's what that represents. Now, when we take a look at that oscillator, you can see it's down below minus 250. You'll see I have three different areas that are noted here. I've got minus 150. That's when you get to oversold and you start looking for bottoming signals out there. Minus 250, you're in the extreme oversold condition. Not that you can't get more oversold. And right now, the way that the market looks like it'll open, I don't know how it will end. That would be its signal out there. But even if we take a look at the COVID bottom out here, that a low with regard to the advanced climb oscillator, that took place on March the 12th. Now, that did not mark the bottom bottom in the market out there. You, what you got was a bounce. So you can see the bounces that you get along the way as you get to these levels. What identified the bottom back then was a rising advanced decline oscillator in the face of lower price. So we don't have that to take a look at right now, but we are down. Uh, if you just follow my crosshair out here, this takes us back to July 19th when price was down at the minus um, 295 level. By the way, we close at minus 282 on uh, Friday. If we come back, and these are just these little V-shaped uh, bounces are usually pretty good bounces out here. This one on August the 19th. Uh, now that was a uh that was only that wasn't to the minus 250 level. That was just below minus 150. So you can see that out here. Back when the uh, uh, the New York Stock Exchange bottom back on December 1st, that's with a uh, oscillator reading at minus 293. Again, we're at minus 282.77. So the reason I point this out, we didn't see it in the intraday charts out there, so I don't know what it's going to look like at 130 now, but certainly the intraday charts that we looked at as of 8 o'clock in the morning were not giving us any kind of bottom signals. Remember, we should see bottom signals form on the intraday charts first. Uh, uh, before we see how that rolls to the daily. Now, how do you put that together? That's a good question. So I did resolve the issue that I had out there. Let me just go back, for example, to the ES Mini. Let's use the ES Mini as uh, as kind of our bellwether for what the markets might do out here. Of course, we should look at the NQ, too. But let me pull up those charts. I'm going to change paneled screens out here. because So this will make it pertinent for the uh, show listeners at 1 o'clock, and obviously those listening right now because we want to take a look at levels. So what do we know about levels out here? So on the 30-minute time frame chart, I'm going to expand this chart out right now. We can see that it still has a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal that has been triggered. What is required here is a bullish reversal candle. Now, if we see a bounce... Uh, that uh, takes place early this morning. Where this bounce should take us to is about the 4367, 4374 level. This is a bullish structured profile. Price is now closed below it for two consecutive bars. Again, this is 834 in the morning out here. If it's just a counter trend move, when you close below a bullish structured profile where price will find resistance is at that center level. So that's 4374. Been established, of course, at 130, there's going to be new profiles most likely. But right now, for those of you that are listening in, here, that's what you want to be looking at. Why? Because if we see a close above 43.74, then what you should anticipate and expect is a move up to the top of that profile. And that's at 44.12. If price can get above that, then you're looking at 44.25. Because there's another TD nine count breakdown resistance level, not too much further above that, another 20 points or so at 44.49.75, I would say that's the price that price would need to close above to suggest that the oversold conditions of the New York Stock Exchange being down below minus 250 that they've taken effect and you could see a move up to 4584. Now I say 4584 just looking at this chart out here as I pull the window back here again just looking uh, for signals the eventual place where price 
could rally to would be that red oscillator change on the daily time frame. So we don't have that signal in place just yet. You can see the TD9 count bottom for the 60-minute uh, uh, chart out there, the bottom signal that's going to form here at uh, at 9 o'clock. Uh, so just, you know, the, the market is stretched. And and the, and the great news is here is that we could take this New York Stock Exchange, this advanced decline oscillator, and you and I, we could take this chart here. We go back to, we, I mean, I'm not going to do it now because it's going to, but we could go back in time. You, you Look, here, this has taken us back how far. This takes us back to December of 2019. So we've got a couple of years out here. It's just the way that it works, how this market can get to these oversold conditions out here. Um, and, then, and then we see some type of a uh, bounce. Or you can see more of a real bottom, which is the way that that bottom was formed back in the 2020 time frame with a lower price and a rising advanced decline oscillator out there. And then it was, I believe, it was the TD9 count bottom uh, that identified the low inside uh, most of the uh, major indices out there. Okay, so that takes care of, uh, of, of that review out there and certainly takes care of uh, our question from uh, Peter in Park City. So, Peter, hope you're listening in early. My daughter is out there skiing this weekend. I uh, was having a blast, that's for sure. So uh, thanks for the request. The, uh, let's get to the next request. There's two more that have come in, one from Michael P. And Michael wanted to take a look at uh, Bitcoin. He was looking for uh, prices where, where, where a gap, what open gap might be, that price might back to. So when I take a look at now for the gaps out here that I'm using, Michael, I'm just going to the weekly time frame chart. Uh, can we, and in the weekly time frame chart, the gap that I show, and it's slightly different, I believe, than what you were looking at, is at the 24605 level. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this weekly time frame chart for because uh, for Bitcoin back. I believe if I go take a look at it, and we'll do this, I'll just confirm this, that last week was the TD9 count bottom for it. Um, actually, I can do this while I can change screens here. I, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I can, I can do what I need to do without interrupting you. So I, you've got the A to B equals CD downside. Gives you a price projection, Michael, 28,260. That's in the weekly time frame. And yes, last week was the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count bottom for the weekly time frame. And if price closes below that low, which is 36,150 this week, tells us about a strong momentum move to the downside. To a certain extent, we don't even need that because price is already doing that. And on the weekly time frame, what price is doing is pulling right back into the lows that formed back in uh, June of 2021. So the key level there to be watching is the 28,800 area. If price gets below that, then that gap that is open at 24,605, Michael, uh, likely becomes the uh, price target. So there's the gap for you. Albeit different than yours, you might be looking at the daily time frame. I think it's uh, right now more pertinent for you and I to look at the weekly time frame. Now, there is another gap that I see out here on the weekly basis um, that was uh, higher between July July 26. We're already inside that. Again, I think that uh, short of some type of bottom signal forming out here for a daily time frame, and I don't have that with regard to uh, Bitcoin, it does look like 28,260 to 24,605 is its price target. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, recording the show early, it's 8.30 in the morning, 8.38 that is. Thanks so much for joining us live if you're listening at the normal time. Thank you so much for doing that. Great. Well, right. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. 8.42 in the morning. Thanks so much for joining us live or whether you're listening at uh, the uh, normal time at 1.42. Right now, we've got all the U.S. equity futures trading lower. The Dow's down 264. Nasdaq's off 236. The S&P's down 50. Russell's down 25. We've got a good old... Um liquidation event that is going on. Not a whole lot of places to hide out here. Yes, gold is up nine bucks, but that's really kind of flat out there. It's a half a percent to the upside. The U.S. dollar index is up uh, three tenths of a percent. Uh, Treasury's uh, not doing a whole lot out here, so it does not appear to be a whole lot of cover out there. We do have a request. Let's go take a look at uh, this request coming in from uh, Hector and the fuel injectors. And uh, Hector wants to take a look at NVIDIA. So uh, happy Marvelous Maniac NFL weekend. No, that was some great games out there. I mean, just truly some great uh, football for those of you that are football lovers. And Stevie was uh, kind of glued to the uh, TV, except uh, except Saturday night when I went to uh, a wedding. And uh, boy, it was good to be out, right? Then a great band. Uh, you know, first time we've had a chance really in two years to go out dancing out there. But uh, in any event, uh, back to NVIDIA out here and uh, what Hector and Patty are looking for. So, NVIDIA, can you please give us an update on the TD9 count uh, patterns out there, daily, weekly, monthly? You personally see the week of February 7th as a possibility. Looking to jump in on this uh, D point uh, like a uh, blue gill on a grub worm. Woo! So, Hector, let's go take a look at NVIDIA out there. Right now, uh, this closed on Friday at 233.74. Let's see where NVIDIA is trading as we speak right now in the pre-market. Last trade fired up at 222, room 222. That was a great little show as a kid, right? So, uh, 222, you close at 233. 217.87, Hector, is the uh, 1.272 expansion of that uh, C to D leg. So it looks like that is a price target. Price is below the bottom of its weekly profile. We're now three weeks below that low out there. So that has completely failed. You do see a rising trend line on the uh, monthly time frame chart. Right now, that's priced at about the 170, 180-ish uh, type area out there. But if there were to be some type of bullish reversal candle, and price is pulling back into areas where it had broken out from, we'll get to those TD9 counts here momentarily, um, you know, you might have a buyable bottom, a tradable. When I say 
buyable. I'm not referring to a buy and hold out here. So when I'm referring to anything that's a bottom, just so that I can really be clear out here, I'm only talking about a tradable type bottom. I'm not talking about the bottom out here. We may get to the bottom, but that's not what I'm referring to at all during today's show. So I just want to make sure that I uh, clarify that out there. And we should get a nice little bounce by taking a look at that oversold condition inside the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange. So that's why we went back and looked at the ES mini charts and take, really took a look at that 30 minute chart to look for areas of resistance that price would have to close above to say, okay, now there's something to think about. Otherwise, those are just areas where the counter trend move would take us to. So back to the white background charts for NVIDIA, for Hector and Patty out here. Friday was bar number seven of a TD9 count. So this suggests that a TD9 count bottom could form between tomorrow, Tuesday, and Thursday out there, which just really lines up with the FOMC meeting, right? We've got an FOMC meeting, starts tomorrow. Wednesday at 2 p.m., we get the release of the uh, de their decision, whatever that might be. And then we, uh, uh, half an hour later, we get to Powell on the stump, uh, probably via Zoom, I would guess, out there. And all that is going to be taking place as we potentially in NVIDIA and uh, in many of the other stocks out there get to a TD9 count bottom signal. Now, because of the A to B equals CD down patterns, Hector, you, you might want to um, wait for that bullish reversal candle in that pattern to confirm that pattern out there. As far as where price would bounce to, it would be that oscillator and change line. So in some instances, we may see a bottom out there, and you might find ones where you, what you're really looking for is distance between price and oscillator and change line, because that will become the first target. Not that price can't clear that, but that becomes your first target for a setup of some type of uh, a trade out there. So with regard to that was the daily time frame. On a weekly basis, Hector was also looking for the TD9 counts there. This week will become bar number eight. We know that a bottom can form a bars eight nine of the bar following. Now, now, you still have to complete bar number nine out there, but the uh, daily and weekly are kind of saying, yeah, I can see this out here. And uh, let's take a look at the monthly time frame chart for you. The monthly time frame chart, this formed a TD9 count top. The price right now is below that oscillator and change line, 240.68. So if you know, if there is no bottom in sight here, or over time, even if there's a if, even if there's a counter trend move out there, what Nvidia is signaling to you and I, Hector and Patty, is that you could see it move all the way down to 134.59. Now, I'm not making that call just yet, but that's what the signal is for us when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart for Nvidia. So, to summarize here, you've got the A to B equals CD to the downside. You've got bar number eight that should form today. Bottoms can form on bar number eight out there. So just keep tuned, keep paying attention. Look for that bullish reversal candle out there to help you to identify a bottom. Let's go to our first caller. It's Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Thanks so much for getting up so early and joining us. Oh, you're welcome, Steve. I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so uh, what do you think? San Francisco, L.A.? Uh, who's going to win that game? I'm not a big football fan. I used to be, but my attitude changed about once there was some of this just got way too political for me. So yes, I, I get just, that. that. That turned me off, and so I haven't really followed it like I used to. But um, I know my my wife's kind of cheering for you know, the the Niners. I mean, I've, I was always a Niner fan, so we'll see. Yeah, That's yeah. Probably who I would go with? Okay, all right. Well, then I won't tell you who I'm rooting for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It doesn't Actually, matter. It's not going to change my life either way. So, yeah. You know, Actually, whatever, whatever happens. Up until up until the fourth quarter, uh, my my uh, you know I, I I enjoy watching all the teams. I, I especially I do like the West Coast teams, and uh, not last week was the first time that I saw the Rams really come together, and they were together all the way for the first uh, really uh, well at least the first half of the game out there, but for the most part the first three quarters. But boy, when they started coughing things up there, I was like, oh, okay, maybe they maybe they're peaking a bit too early. But it's, I, I look forward to the game next week. It should be a, a great game. But I know you. You didn't call to talk about football. You called to talk about the markets in general. So how can I help you here? I didn't catch the first segment, so you might have gone over some of this already. But I know on some of the, I think it's like at least the Dow, the IWM, I think even the NASDAQ, maybe all of them, they have uh, AV equals CD patterns. Yes. And so I don't know if you've gone over those and like at what point I think we might have gone beyond the one-to-one. -one, but if you could just go over that, please, I'd appreciate it on, on the daily Sure. For which which specific uh, you you want the cash indices out there versus the futures? Oh, you can do any of them. I mean, I, I guess it shows up definitely like on the diamonds and on the Qs and the, you know all that those those type of things. So I think it would also show up on the futures as well. But you can take a look at it. 
Yeah, well, here, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, expand out for the uh, S&P right now. Uh, you can see it's A to B equals CD pattern. Its next uh, price projection level would be the 1.618 area. That's around 43.66. Below that would get us back into the lows that formed back in October of 2021. That would be the 1 to 2 A to B equals CD area, and that's at the 42.76 level. Uh, Brent, any questions about the S&P A to B equals CD down? Yeah, so I guess that's kind of my point. It seems like we're definitely getting pretty extended. I mean, you start getting to one to six, one eight, and twos, and I mean that starts to get to the point where. And I think you've kind of alluded to that that there's a potential for at least a bounce here at some point. Yes, I, well, definitely we're going to see a bounce, and it's and I believe at this stage here because we've gotten so oversold, it's going to provide an opportunity. We're in a two-way market out here. It's going to provide an opportunity to uh, to, to play that. But uh, Brent, we're going to a breakout here. We're going to come to our small uh, uh, last uh, final session of the uh, show. But stay tuned, and uh, so we'll close it out with Brent in Martinez, California. See Rose with CFN. We'll be right. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secure investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're uh, doing the alphabet. Uh, we're talking about the A to B equals CD pattern out here. I do have the uh, NDX 100 up on the uh, screen here, Brent, and there are multiple A to B equals CD patterns. The one that I have here is not really one that I like, and the reason that I say that is because the retracement on this B to C leg is way more than a .786 retracement. It's really 100% move of move, so I don't consider that to be a real valid A to B equals CD pattern. Again, that's that's Steve uh, personal opinion here. The A to B equals CD pattern that I really believe is in play is the one that starts with the high on December 28th as our A point, the B point being January 10th, and the C point out here being the high from January 12th. And price has made its way through the one-to-one -one level. We're now near the 1.272 at 14,183. So that's what I think is in play. Now, uh, Friday was bar number six, Brent, of a TD9 count from a daily standpoint. So, um, you know, we're kind of off there. That says that we wouldn't see some type of uh, potential potential bottom with that signal pattern until maybe Wednesday through Friday. So I think we need to keep an eye out looking for bullish reversal candles. If we get those, that's what should be the signal to, uh, for all the A to B equals C patterns that are out there to suggest that we have some type of counter trend rally. Uh, so, uh, Brent, what what additional what, what is there anything else that I can provide to you in the next 30, 40 seconds? No, I think that's it, Steve. I'll always be watching like everybody else is and looking for that uh, bullish reversal. Yeah, you know, the when you get to those expansion levels, like you were pointing out, they were pretty extended when we take a look at that C to D leg out there. Um, what I found is until we get that bullish reversal candle, it just suggests that price is likely going to head lower out there. So uh, I, I just that's why I suggest that people always wait for that confirmation. So, Brent, always good to uh, hear from you. Uh, sounds like you slept in. I'm glad that you did that, uh, you know. Five o'clock in the morning. What time do you get up? Uh, do, you set your, do you get up normally at around five? I usually do. I used to always get up around 4.30 for work. I'm retired now, but I still get up early. I just, that's, the type of, that's how my clock is, I guess. <laughs> that's perfect. perfect. Hey, Brett, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for the call. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next. And if you're listening at 1 o'clock, it's your favorite polar bear, David White. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 8, 8.06 a.m. sharp. Take care, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.